Tonight, where we're going, we don't need roads. We're taking a trip back to the future with The Mag and New York Times bestselling author Shay Serrano. The year is 1989. Berlin brought the wall down, Tone Lock's Wild Thing shut the club down, and Marty McFly was back to causing trouble in the future with a cinematic masterpiece up there with Sister Act 2 among the best sequels ever. The first Back to the Future was all about having fun, but Back to the Future 2 took a much darker turn. A loud, blonde, handsy casino magnate who turns his gambling winnings into an autocratic police state. The movie strained belief until it didn't. Set in the far-off year of 2015, Back to the Future 2 imagined a future of hoverboards, holograms, and Skype calls. But the most iconic and prophetic vision of all were a pair of self-lacing Nikes known simply as the Mags. Places. All right. For years, decades even, the scene remained nothing more than sci-fi lore and sneakerhead porn. Then, in 2011, it happened. No longer would the mag be known only as the greatest shoe never made. Starting on September 8th, Nike released 1,500 pairs of the mag via auctions for 10 days, with all proceeds going to the Michael J. Fox Foundation. Shout out good causes. While missing the self-lacing technology, this mag was designed as an exact replica of the original from Back to the Future 2. From the contours of the upper to the electroluminescent Nike on the strap, this was like the Ark of the Covenant getting a Black Friday release. Great Scott. Great Scott indeed. Needless to say, the world went nuts. Not even just sneakerheads. UK rapper Tiny Tempa bought the first pair for $37,000. Kid Cudi won four pairs. Brian Wilson, a baseball player, baseball, wore a pair in the dugout. It would take Nike five more years to get enough plutonium for another run at the sneaker, this time with the real-life self-lacing technology creating a fully functional Nike mag, a technological grail that routinely fetches over $25,000 on StockX. For a shoe of such serious sneaker and movie magnificence, we decided to bring in cultural critic, Twitter God, and New York Times best-selling author of Movies and Other Things to comment. Ladies and gentlemen, Shea Serrano. All right, take me back to that moment in 1989 or whenever you watch it. I back just to realized you're wearing New Balance. I am wearing New Balance. I thought you were wearing black dress shoes. No. Because I'm only looking at your face. Young Blizzy only wears New Balance. That's incredible. Unless like he's wearing Balenciagas. Everyone remembers that classic, iconic moment when Marty McFly first slips on the Air Mags in Back to the Future 2. Tell me a little about your first reaction upon seeing that moment. My first reaction was probably the same reaction a lot of people had. You just, you're watching it and you see the shoes sort of <laughs> And he was as surprised as I was when it happened. Mm. And you immediately are just like, Ma, can we get the, can we get these shoes? Can yeah. we get a hoverboard? Can we get the vet? Like, can I have anything from this movie? But especially, can I have these shoes? That was the, that was the object you coveted. That was the one. Yeah, I'm not even a shoe guy, but that was the one I wanted. I would still like to have a pair just to, I would never put them on, but I would like to see them. <laughs> Which player would you like to see wear the Nike mags in a game? And I would want to see the person least likely. I want to be surprised. Mm. Like if PJ shows up in these shoes, you go like, obviously, obviously. PJ is going to wear those shoes. Right. But if like fucking Aaron Baines, Aaron Baines shows up, the pride of Australia yeah. walks out with the, with the Nike Zoops. Size 25 <laughs> Nike Zoops. <laughs> and it takes several seconds for them to zoop yeah. like a fucking bridge opening up for a ship to pass through. Yeah. I would love that. And then he goes out and he gives you two, four, and one. Classic Bane stat line. Let's talk a little about sneakers in movies. Okay. Give me your top three most iconic sneaker moments of all time in cinema. Well, if we're not including this one. Well, let's let's put this, this one aside out. for a this moment. This one's out. What are three others? And then we can rank give them. Me, give me Benny the Jet. Benny the Jet. In the Sandlot with Sandlot. the Flyers. Another shoe as soon as you saw it, and he outran the dog, and you're like, I would like to have that shoe, please. Mm -hmm. um, the Cortez, Forrest Gump's Cortez. Forrest Gump Cortez. Yeah, yeah, the Classic. red and blue. Okay. And uh, and and after that, we can go. Oh, give me do the right thing. Do the right thing. What's the name of that shoe? I don't know the names of shoes. It's the white cement scuff. Give me the white cement scuff. Give me that one. What makes sports gambling the perfect time traveler crime? Because there's no, there's no like actual crime being committed. Like if you time travel to whatever, figure out how to open a bank vault. In this case, that's just straight up theft. This, there's, a, there's like a moral ambiguity when you're talking about you can see the future. Like, I don't think Nicolas Cage was breaking any rules in Next, 
Mm. When he was looking into the future to like gamble. Interesting. That's fine. So you're okay with the ethics of time travel or if gambling? If you can figure out how to time travel, then fucking go nuts. Perfect segue to my next question. Top time travel movies of all time. Okay. Well, let's go Time Cop 1. Time Cop's number one. Time Cop's okay. number one for me. Mm -hmm. We're coming in. We're coming in with heaters. Give me Time Cop 1. Give me a Back to the Future, but part one. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. You're a traditionalist. Better than part I see. two. Interesting. Uh, there's a movie called Primer. Have you ever seen Primer? Never seen Primer. Oh my God, I don't, I don't understand it. Yeah, there are different like, like infographics you can go on the internet that show like what's happening. It's impossible to follow. Nobody who has ever said they understood Primer has actually understood Primer. Um, so give me that one for for number three, just so we can argue about it. Okay. Yeah. No, no Terminator on that list. You can put Terminator four. I don't, I don't mind. But, but uh, that's Terminator like, four, the fourth Terminator. No, no, oh, no. You Terminator can, at number four. At number four. Which Terminator? Oh, you know what? We're gonna, we're, we're gonna do the new Terminator because the guy's a Mexican. Oh, okay. The new Terminator's fucking Mexican, baby. You want that new Terminator at number so, four? I'm gonna move him to number one, actually. Number we're one? Move, we're gonna move everybody else wow. down. I haven't even seen it yet, Adios, but it's the best time, time travel movie I've ever seen. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Your second book, Basketball and Other Things. Yes. Great book, another New York Times bestseller. Mm -hmm. And then we've got this book from nine years earlier. Yes. Yes. Somebody named Free Darko wrote this book. Great book. Yeah, you've read this book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody who has written about basketball, I think, in the last 10 years has knows who Free Darko is. I mean, nobody knows what Free Darko is. Fair. But you know the name Free Darko. I'm unfamiliar as well. Some people have noticed some similarities between the two books. The I don't see it. Color scheme, the layout, the typography. Mm -hmm. Do you care to comment on these? I don't see any I don't, uncanny it look, parallels. It doesn't look the same. No similarities. At all. One's got a forward by Reggie Miller. One's got a forward by Gilbert Arenas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was I mean, Gilbert about... Arenas not available to do your book? <laughs> <laughs> Reggie's forward is better. Oh, interesting. Honestly, let's talk a little about time travel again. Someone gives you a magic version of BasketballReference.com right now. Mm -hmm. You'd be totally okay going in there and placing bets on I tomorrow's would be games. Wildly rich by the end of the week. Yes, just like unbelievable. <laughs> just unbelievably rich. Yeah, I would have last night been like Kyrie Irving is going to score 50 points in his debut and he's going to miss the game winning jumper after he falls down. Yeah. I thought it, I think it's better that he missed it, honestly. There's a hot take for you. Oh, that is a hot take. I'm never going to forget that moment. A hot take for a hot man. Thank you Shay Serrano for taking time off your New York Times best selling book tour. Yes. This has been your boy Young Blizzy reporting live from StockX World headquarters in Detroit. Until my next heat check, stay laced. <laughs>